speaking of the opening of the book of Matthew, chapter 7. <clears throat> kind of, a, I don't know what the word would be. You might say ironic that he would mention writing a rebuttal of this fellow because it goes on with part of what we look at today. <clears throat> If you're familiar with this area of scripture in chapter 6 of Matthew, Christ is dealing primarily with our relationship towards God. He tells us, he gives commands about alms and fasting and prayer and how that God will provide for our needs. Amen. In chapter 7 here, is, he shifts his focus more towards our relationship with man. So probably the second most quoted scripture, especially in our day, Matthew 7, 1, judge not that you be not judged, right? I mean, I know it's taken out of context, but <laughs> we do need to be careful how we present ourselves. Yeah. But we'll go on down to verse number 12 for our text. He is, when he begins about judging and about being hypocritical, he gives us that scripture about casting our pearls before the swine. Then the one that everyone likes about asking, it shall be given to you, knocking, it shall be opened to you. Mm -hmm. He talks about how that we give appropriate gifts so that even more so God will give us good gifts. And he kind of wraps all that up in verse 12. And he says, therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men do and do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Amen. This is often referred to as the golden rule. Uh, we can we'll have to turn there, I'll read it for us. Luke words it a little more closely to how we're used to hearing it probably. Luke 6, 31, the same scripture, he says, And as you would that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise. Amen. And do unto others as you would have them do to you, or treat others how you want to be treated, is how we often say it today. But it really is the sum of what he is saying here that we are to treat others how we would want to be treated. Amen. Well, we live in a very self centered society today, and so this principle is often thrown to the wayside. But even among Christians, I don't know that we live by this principle, do we? Mm -hmm. We're very, very easily we can be guilty of thinking of ourselves better than others, or right? Looking down on others, we can very become very Pharisaical very easily. Yep. And if I'm being honest, the reason most people don't want to come to our type of churches is they're afraid to be looked down upon. Yep. Yeah. That's. Really, a poor reflection on us and the church and even Christ Himself. Mm -hmm. For how we interact with others is a reflection on all those three. You know, I'm not saying we should be a buddy buddy with the world and go with this co coexist movement that they have going on, but right. kindness does go a long way. And it, it does. It is a characteristic of a child of God. Christ gives us countless examples of being kind and compassionate towards others. Let's go over to Luke for a few moments here. Luke chapter 7. <coughs> Says this you will win a lot more people to Christ by being kind to them than trying to show the truth down the fruits. Right. But we oftentimes are guilty of that, aren't we? We want to, to say, hey, well, here's the truth, and you like it or don't. But, mm. and certainly we ought to preach the truth. Certainly we ought to call sin for what it is. But you know, being mean or nasty about it is not presenting in a Christ-like manner. You're right. Luke chapter 7, verse 
34, Christ here, after the Pharisees are really criticizing him, he's responding to him here. He says, The Son of Man has come eating and drinking. He says, Behold, a gluttonous man, a wine giver, a friend of publicans and sinners. You know, Christ was not buddy buddy with sinners, but yes, he was often found in the company with them. Right. He was often found talking to them and preaching to them rather than to the religious elite of the day. None of his disciples were Pharisees, were they? None of them were Sadducees. None of them were men of high esteem. Right. Even the others, such as Mary and Martha, they were, you know, at least Mary Magdalene was said to be a prostitute. So. Right. Yep. By and large, we would not even go out of our way to speak to such a person. You know, I was thinking as I was talking to someone who the other day just more casually than most Christians wouldn't even go out of the way to speak to this type of person. Right. So it would be said of us that we would be a friend of public and then sinners like Christ was. That we, we said not that we would enjoin them in their sins and participate in their wickedness, but that we would be friendly to them, that we would show kindness to others. Yeah. If you go on down to verse 36 to 39, here we have Christ comes to a certain Pharisee's house and says, and one of the Pharisees desired of him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, which she knew that Jesus, or when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet, behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Pay attention to verse 39, what it says here. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner a woman this is that touches him, for she is a sinner. Yeah. Isn't that how we look upon yeah. people though? You're right. Well, she's a sinner. I shouldn't have anything to do with her, or him, or that group over there. <coughs> Said none of this am I saying we ought to be ecumenical with them, but we should <coughs> not look it down on others because of Though they may be in sin, though they may be a heretic, though they may be not our stripe, a Christian. But that's exactly what this Pharisee did. He's a, mm -hmm. a sinner. The Pharisees have a problem seeing themselves for who they are. And if we're not careful, we will forget that as well. Yeah. Well, I know I do cite these verses all the time, but. It, it's only grace that makes us differ. Amen. It's only by the grace of God that I am what I am, as Paul says. Amen. Separate and aside from grace, we would be just as sinful, if not more sinful, than the most wicked of men. Mm -hmm. so, in verse 40, he kind of condemns the Pharisee a little bit here, and he says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. Well, he knew exactly what Simon was thinking, and he called him out for it. Mm -hmm. Over the next several verses, he illustrates to him this. In the end, he tells the woman, "Thy faith has saved thee; go in peace." Mm -hmm. And we never said that to the Pharisees. I don't know if he was ever saved or not. All right, there was no indication that he was. Well, Christ off said he came to call the. But sinners to repentance. Mm -hmm. He said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And in the same place, he said, The whole need not a physician, they that are sick. He said, We need to really display the same type of compassion and kindness that Christ displayed. But just like this. Pharisee here that will say, oh, that one was a sinner. Why is, why didn't he tell her to stop touching him? We 
are guilty of the same type of thing. Mm -hmm. we'll go over to John chapter 4. So we're all familiar with the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to read the whole account here, but notice two verses here in verse number nine after Christ had met with the woman and said, Ask for a drink. So then say the woman was married unto him. How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews had no dealing with the Samaritans. The Jews looked down upon the Samaritans because they were half breeds, if you will, there. Mm -hmm. Religious teaching were a little bit different than theirs. But we ought to be ever guilty of this same thing that we would look down upon another group of people because they either are lesser in society than us or maybe they don't have as much as we do. But right. Maybe they don't know all the truths that we know. For the, the Jews, they had the very oracles of God. And yet, instead of telling others about it, they just looked down upon them. Mm -hmm. They thought they were better. They said, we have Abraham as our father. That was their boast oftentimes. Right. I think John the Baptist condemned him and said, well, God can raise up children of Abraham with these rocks over here. Mm -hmm. No, we ought never be uh, guilty of passing over or telling someone about Christ because of who they are. Amen. Well, if you go on down to verse 27 of the same chapter, when the disciples had returned, because they had went into town to buy meat, it said, verse 27, and it says, And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he had talked with the woman. Well, they were very Jewish, weren't they? Mm -hmm. They were like, wow, Jesus is over there talking to this Samaritan. Well, we want to do the same. Well, Larry was out in the middle of New Providence talking to some druggie somewhere. Right. Why is he talking to that person? <laughs> yeah. But really, those are the types of people that need Christ the most, isn't it? Amen. Oftentimes, they're the ones more willing to accept, if I can say it that way, accept the gospel than those that are already religious. That's it. Amen. And that's oftentimes who Jesus was found preaching to and being in a company with. You know, we act as we're, we're so pure that we can't be around sinners. Yet we've rather realized that we, in of ourselves, are sinners as, as well. <laughs> Let's turn over to Luke chapter 10 and see another instance here. I think we all know this one. The, the parable of the Good Samaritans is often referred to. Luke chapter 10, we'll begin in verse 25. So then, behold, a certain lawyer stood himself and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He, speaking of Jesus, said unto him, What is it, what is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy might, and thy neighbor as thyself. If you're familiar with the scriptures, that's Christ refers to those in other places as the two greatest commandments, and that all the law and prophets hang on those two things. And he, speaking of Jesus again, said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, and the lawyer here, Willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Mm -hmm. We are often willing to justify ourselves like this lawyer here, aren't we? Right. We want us to make ourselves look good. When we really need to compare ourselves to what God's word is saying, we'll find that we're oftentimes lacking. Mm -hmm. Then verse 30 through verse 37. We have the parable here. It says, Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jericho, to, or from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, 
I know what Jesus is saying here, but I don't believe anything happens by accident. Amen. There came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, the Levite, when he was at the same place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Mm. I'm afraid that's by and large many sovereign grace Baptists today, like the priest and the Levite. Amen. You're right. We just want to look the other way and act like we don't see. That doesn't excuse our responsibility. Though. But a certain Samaritan, verse 33, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. You bet. I know Christ is a perfect example of this, but shouldn't we follow his example? Mm -hmm. How many of us would have compassion on a complete stranger and just completely take care of what they need? And he goes on to say, if he spends more, I'll pay it too. Mm -hmm. you know, he also says, well, I, I know when someone comes up asking me for money, I usually say, well, I don't have any cash on me. <laughs> a couple of them say, well, you can go down to the ATM over there. <laughs> well, that's, that's a little bold of them, I think. But it, You know, it's not, you know, if I, it's not necessarily our job to, to figure out what their intentions are. We are to have compassion, if we, especially if the Lord lays it on our heart to have compassion. I, I know there's fake people out there, but they'll answer to God and do. Right. It's not up to us to say, well, you're just going to go down there and buy some booze, aren't you? That's not having compassion on them, is it? Nope. Well, we ought to always reflect Christ in our actions. You no, know, what does Christ say to him in verse 36? Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him, when he just said, Go and do thou likewise. Well, it's the same for us that we're to go and do likewise. Amen. To have mercy, to have compassion, to have show kindness to others. And all of that, we don't have to compromise the truth. If anything, we should, in our kindness, share the gospel with them. And certainly, it's profitable to them if we provide for their needs, but it's even more profitable to them if we Tell them about the one who can save their soul. Mm -hmm. so as the saying goes, you'll catch more flies than honey than vinegar. <laughs> right? You're not going to win a whole lot of people with Christ by shoving the truth down their throats. But... You know what the Levite came over and said, well, you're unclean, I can't touch you. Too bad. Mm. Right. I mean, there was some truth in that, probably, but the priest who came by and said, well, you were heading down to Jericho. That's a pretty wicked city, so I'm not going to have anything to do with you. We make the same type of excuses, don't we? Mm-hmm. Well, we... I think as a, the people of God need to have more kindness to those out in the world. Mm -hmm. Certainly we need to have kindness to one another. We can't even get that right half the time. So. Right. Well, let's go over to Luke again. Chapter 6 this time. So it's always been the Christian duty to be kind to those around us. Even those that don't treat us well. Right. We'll see in Luke chapter 6 and verse 27 28. Christ says, But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. 
we are not to wish evil upon our enemies. We're not to try to bring down a curse upon them. We're just simply to be kind and even pray for them, he says. God will do with them what he sees fit. Amen. In fact, when we turn over to Romans chapter 12, Paul brings this out. Romans chapter 12, verse number 14 through 21. He says, verse 14, very much like Christ said, bless them which persecute you, persecute you, bless and curse not. We rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be the same mind one towards another, mind not high things, but consent to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense no man evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peacefully with all men. Daily beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place to under wrath, for it is written, Vengeance of mine I will pay, saith the Lord. Amen. Therefore, if I am in hunger, feed him, if he thirst, give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt keep coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Well, he begins by telling us to bless them which persecute us. And verse 15 is often quoted, rejoice with them that do rejoice and leave them that weep. Not just speaking of those of the household of faith. Mm -hmm. The context here is really towards all men. In verse 16, he tells us to mind not think high things, but can send them into low estates. Be not wise in your own conceits. So we're not to think too highly of ourselves and think we're above other people. Amen. That's not really Christ like attitude to have, that we to think we're better than someone else. Well, then he tells us not to repay evil with evil in verse 17. And tells us to live peacefully with all men. Mm -hmm. well, that's one that's difficult to do. He does say if it's possible. Sometimes it's not possible, but he does say as much as lie, I think. So as much Amen. as you can try, you can put forward to live peacefully with all men. That means the ones you like and the ones you don't like. That's it. The ones that like you and the ones that don't like you. And then he tells us in verse 19 that we're not to take vengeance that belongs to God. We're not to get even, if you will. Amen. That's the world's teaching, but God will get even for us. That's it. <coughs> in verse 20, it goes completely in contradiction to the world's thinking of that we're to feed our enemies and give them drink that we're to he says in so doing we'll keep coals of fire on his head we'll be bad we'll bother his conscience you know, be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good you're never going to beat evil by doing more evil that's it amen we're just simply following the Example of Christ that will overcome evil. I said the world's teaching is to get even, the world's teaching is to not to be nice to those who aren't nice to you. Mm -hmm. But kindness and compassion are the characteristics of a child of God. To do unto others as we have them do unto others. Mm -hmm. Not to have the world seems to have the reverse today. It's right. Do unto others as they've done to you. Mm -hmm. Or do one of those before they do one to you. That's it. If we go over to Galatians for a moment, Galatians chapter 5. <coughs> Just in case you didn't think that kindness is a characteristic of the child of God, Paul listed right here in the fruits of the Spirit, Galatians 5, verse. 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, which is kindness, Amen. goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such as love. Most of us can't get love down, right? So I'm not surprised we haven't got the kindness. Amen. 
but it is a characteristic of a mature child of God. And going over chapter 6, verse 10, he says, As we therefore have as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good men that are of the household of faith. Mm -hmm. I left out the middle of there on purpose. And we said, let us do good to all of men, mm -hmm. especially in them who are the household of faith. Amen. Well, yes, we, we should do good to our brothers and sisters in Christ, but he says do good to all of them. Whether look. Look, it's a beggar out on the street, a drunk down at the bar, or whether it's your wicked neighbor that you can't get along with, or whoever it may be, we are commanded to do good unto them as we have opportunity to. So if any person has a conscience, if you're doing good to them and they're not doing good to you, it'll eventually get to them. So the question, well, what's different about this person? So in everything we do, we ought to reflect the character of Christ. So I know in our flesh, it's easy to get angry. It's easy to look down upon others. It's easy to mm -hmm. say, I'm not going to deal with that type of person. <laughs> no one is outside the reach of God. Amen. And this even, I know some might disagree with me on this, but even the Sodomite is not outside the reach of God. You're right. Amen. Let's go over to Ephesians real quick and we'll close. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse number 32. Well, after he, he kind of gives us several commands here about putting on the new man, putting off our old ways. He concludes with, and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Amen. Well, certainly we ought to be kind one to another as the people of God. Amen. Even people don't say tenderhearted or forgiving one another. I think we forget this last part. Even if God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. There you go. Considering how great God has forgiven us, we ought to be a forgiving people. It's the inclination of the flesh to hold grudges, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You got it. It's the inclination of the flesh to not to get, not to forgive when someone has done us wrong. But yet we have done God greatly wrong, and He's forgiven us. Mm -hmm. You don't have to turn there, but over in Colossians 3, 12 and 13, Paul expounds even more upon that. Mm -hmm. How we are to display kindness and forgiveness and we love one towards another. We can have a love for people and not love their sin, if you will. There you go. We can have a... Just because you love someone doesn't mean you approve of everything they do. Mm -hmm. If when we truly have a love for people, we'll warn them of, what, of their sin, where it's going to take them, and the only one that can save them from their sin. I think so we ought to preach against sin. We ought to preach the truth of God's word. We ought to stand firm on those things, not compromise. We ought to do it in a kind-hearted manner when approaching those that disagree with us. Mm -hmm. You can debate and argue all you want to, but that's not going to win anyone to Christ. That's it. Amen. We'll just simply, if it's true as the Word of God, show them from the Scriptures. If it's, mm -hmm. if they're in wickedness, and just tell them about Christ. In all things, let us be kind to others. Let us have compassion towards others. Mm -hmm. Let us never be guilty of the being like the Pharisees looking down upon others who are quote, more sinful than us. Mm -hmm. Or like the Jews and looking down on their classes because they don't have the same truths or the same lineage even that we do. Well, I don't think we have, a, well, we have a problem with this, but I know in the past, we might look down upon a particular race because of who they are. Right. Or might look down a particular nation because of 
what it is. Mm -hmm. You know those Russians over there, they need the gospel just as much as the Ukrainians do. You got it. Amen. The Chinese, they, they are by and large more accepting the gospel than <coughs> the Americans. There's a whole lot of churches over there that are persecuted and they probably don't have sovereign grace Baptists over the door. Right. But by and large, most of our type of people would say, well, they must not be real Christians. Mm. There you go. Well, we're just like the Pharisees looking down upon others. Well, let us do what others as we would have them do to us. So you notice in that text he says, turn there for I'm going to mess it up. He said, all things whatsoever. Not just some things or not just things you like, but he said, all things that you would have men to do and you do to them also. You bet. Whether it's if you would want them to come and rail at you for believing different than you, then that's how you're going to do them. I don't think mm -hmm. anyone wants that to do that. Right. You don't, you don't want someone to come up to you and say, well, I disagree with you and you're wrong, you're going to hell because of that. Mm -hmm. well, certainly we can warn them about hell if there are what we have to do in the, the right kind of manner, if you can say it that way. Repent and believe the gospel has always been the, the message and it should still be the message today. Mm -hmm. I've used the example of a abortion clinic. I was reading or watching a movie about it actually and it's, these two groups were out there, one shouting your baby killers and abortion is murder and those things may be true, mm -hmm. but the way they present themselves, they, just gained enemies more than friends. Right. And the other group, I just simply try to share the gospel with them and be kind to those. That they're the ones that end up winning over the director of the clinic. Mm -hmm. I said, you can share the truth in the wrong way. Sure. They bet. The Pharisees, they were good at that. They had the truth. But they oftentimes did it wrong way, didn't they? They were very self righteous and hypocritical in the way they did it. Right. If we're not careful, we'll be just like them. Even Christ said, do as they say, but don't do like they do. <laughs> they, they tell them the truth, they don't do the truth. Right. <clears throat> but let us always strive to be like Christ. Let's always try to have Christ reflected in our lives. Amen. Amen. I often use that phrase, they can see Christ in and through us. They're not going to see it if you have a nasty and hateful spirit about you. Amen. They're not going to see it if you're always combative and wanting to argue with someone else. And sometimes you have to just say, get behind me, Satan, but that's not every single case. It's right. Usually rarely the case. Well, let's just simply show compassion and kindness even as Christ did. He, over and over again throughout the scriptures did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we oftentimes will look, act like we're something because we're, you know, because we think we're Baptists and we're the true church, and do what we are, but it doesn't make us any better than the other. Amen. I said, I think we're very short-sighted to forget that it's simply by the grace of God that we have any truth, that we have any, that we have salvation even, Amen. Yeah. But for the grace of God, we would be just as a, these wicked men. Amen. Whereas one brother said he was watching a criminal be led to execution. He said, but for the grace of God, there we go I. That's it. Until we have that type of attitude, we won't be really willing to share the gospel with those who need it. We'll close with that thought. Amen.